Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. Now that that interruption is over, the unexpected halt of proceedings sent a clamor around the courtroom, but outside the bailey, where Londoners knew nothing of the secret trial within, it was a typical still night. Then, at a little past eight o'clock in that evening, Mr. Sholmes and his partner returned to Baker Street. Safe and sound? Oh my goodness, would you look at that bird! Ooh! We have returned, my dear fellows! How did we afford that? What is- oh, oh my goodness! Welcome back to Britain, and thank you for your timely help. No, oh, think nothing of it. I believe you've had an even more weary day than Mikotoba and I know. You could say that, from the brink of defeat in court earlier. So it goes. So this prosecutor, Asogi, had you on the ropes, Eddie. He's your best friend? Hmm, the drama. Well, he's not really the man I knew in Japan anymore. Cosm has changed. Oh, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible that he even entertained the idea of acting as the Reaper's assassin. Well, nevertheless, you must introduce me. After all, I've only ever met the young man as a corpse. <laughs> right, you have some catching up to do when this is all over. Hmm, how will it play out? Mr. Sholm still hasn't told us the truth about what really happened back then, but the motivation of what himself described as a great detective's lie. Make me think, my friend, I come on. Now then, I must say, it's really quite a journey all the way to, J to France. Well, it's another country, Mr. Sholmes. So, what news of Judge Jigoku? We took him to Scotland Yard. Investigation detectives there have a lot of questions for the man. Poor Professor Mikotoba. Must be quite a shock for him. Yes. I picked this up at the telegraph office on our way home. Dang, you had a busy day. What is it? Surely you haven't forgotten already. I put up you for the matter only yesterday. Oh, right, that telegram. You put upon me, Mr. Sholmes. I had to fill out your telegraph to Japan and foot the bill as well. Oh. You had a reply already? What was so urgent, though? Oh, whoops. <laughs> what was so urgent, you ask? Well, such matters can wait until later. I'm far too hungry for an involved conversation at present. Well, that was polite. Well, that's good news. Supper's ready. Ah, what a feast. If I were none the wiser, I'd think the trial were already won. <laughs> Roast beef, kippers. Stew, steak, kidney, Yorkshire pudding. Dude, think of his Thanksgiving, oh my god. Tomorrow could be a very long day, so eat up, or else. <laughs> Brandishing her gun. In that case, I think I'll seat myself right here. This place appears to be the only one set with a helping of pheasant as well. <laughs> Sorry, Haley, not there. Huh? Why ever not? Are we in set places this evening? Yes, and that place is for Susie's daddy. Oh, for, for me? That's right. I made it especially for you, Professor Mickey. Mickey! I just exploded. <laughs> if you saw my face. Oh, too sweet. I see. Well, it's kind of you. What? Don't cry. It's a shame, really. Now what? Uh, don't keep us waiting. Well, for a brief moment, I believed it. That Susie and I were half-sisters, I mean. Yeah, me too. Wait, what? How'd you learn the contrary? Oh. Iris, do, do you mean? <sighs> yes. I know now. I overheard yesterday. I secretly listened to the conversation you had after I tricked you all into thinking I left. What? Wait, so it, it... Like, is he actually dead? I don't... I don't understand. The misunderstanding arose because of that autopsy report from ten years ago. But actually, it turned out that neither Dr. Wilson nor Professor Mikotobo or Iris' father. Oh, thank God. I mean, yo, RIP Dr. Wilson. That is sad. 
Do not get me wrong. But then who's Iris' dad? And what about her mom? I'm actually balling. I'm crying at the club, bro. <laughs> yes, about that, Iris. You know, I... I know. You can't tell me at the moment. Oh, Iris. I'm acting... <laughs> <laughs> the pheasant is by way of apology. I'm sorry for eavesdropping. Yo, apology. <laughs> You're forgiven. <laughs> oh, no, that's quite all right. <clears throat> then why don't I get an apologetic pheasant? <laughs> that's probably the best line in the whole game. <laughs> I'm going to break my chair, bro. <sighs> ah! <laughs> God, why did I screen cap that? So just who is Iris' father? Suppose that's not something we'll be finding out today. Or... ever. So then, let us dine. While our largely pheasantless plates are still piping hot. A fine idea, Sholmes. It all looks absolutely delicious. Eat as much as you like. Uh, Mickey, there are always seconds. But not for you, Sholmes. No pheasant. Oh, come on now! This could be our last chance to ask questions before tomorrow's trial. About that telegram from Japan and Kazuma. Can't let this opportunity slip away. Time's of the essence. God dang, he always be on that grind. Yo, you got your nasty French soil shoes on your own furniture. Sholmes. <sighs> Goodness. The, he's like a dog. <laughs> anyway, I... Can't press. Oh, there we go. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Uh, surely it's abundantly clear that I wasn't brooding over Mikotoba's refusal to share the pheasant with me. Uh, nevertheless, I felt the need to withdraw from the social circle for a while and look on with hungry eyes. You're such a little baby, you know that? Sorry, Hurley. I cooked that pheasant specially for Susie's daddy. Even though I've played the role of father to you for longer. <laughs> uh, Sholmes? Can I discuss something with you? Mm. Ah, certainly, my dear fellow. <laughs> I find myself quite in the mood for a spell of conversation now. No doubt. You're hungry to learn more, my deep love of game. A pheasant? I, I can probably contain my curiosity on that one. Though I do like a good bird myself. I'm a chicken kind of guy. And duck. Mostly chicken. You needn't look at me in that fashion. Uh, what do you mean? It seems that before we discuss the pheasant, we have some rather unpheasant matters to- Okay, that is the worst line in the whole game. Wow. Jesus. Okay, come on, man. Out with it. Let's go- What, what do you hear from Japan? So that- Telegram. Ah, this. I think my lucky stars had arrived in time. Record. Found at as indicated. Duplicate follows. K. Asogi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, J. Wilson. Okay. What? Well, those four names. We've heard them in that same fashion before. In the last game. And it brought me back then, too. They came up in the forgotten case last time, last spring. Dude, R.I.P. him, dude. That was so effed up. God dang. Sting an egg, Benedict. Ugh. Wait, what was that name? It's definitely Benedict. Whatever. What happened to be a simple case of aggravated murder turned out to be the masking of monumental intrigue, a plot that involved the sale of British government secrets to foreign states, and exposing the means by which those secrets were being leaked. We deciphered a fragment of a message. K, Asogi, A, Shin, Gregson, Wilson. But we didn't find the names out until the case was over. We never did at the bottom what they meant. All we knew was that the information had been sent to somebody in the British government. To someone in Japan. Uh, Sholmes, where are you? What the? Uh, yes. Where did the sender of the telegram discover them, Sholmes? I have here the message I had wired yesterday. Allow me to read it to you. Enter Judge Jigoku's office, undetected, and investigate telegram records. 
Expect to find communication from Britain dated one year ago. List of four names. Need by tomorrow. Naruhodo. Oh yeah, put my name on it? Uh... Wait, does that mean? A central detective I know who specializes in clandestine missions of this nature. Uh, you asked Inspector Osanaka. <laughs> I always get the last laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That could mean stitches. Oh my god, wait, what did she say? Then take such an arduous mission? And in my name? I wonder what guys he opted for this one. My dear fellows, it was a matter of great urgency, you understand? We had to hire the best. Anyway, list of names was found in Sashiro's office, as Sholmes predicted. No. Jigoku? He's a double agent? So you mean the mysterious collection of names that was sent from Britain to Japan was... It was sent to Judge Jigoku. He was indeed the receptor Was he a part of the conspiracy to kill Shin? There's like a non-zero chance. I don't believe it. That doesn't answer the question of what the list of names actually signifies. Hmm. I did formulate a hypothesis about that. But without a shred of evidence, I couldn't possibly have shared it. Mr. Sholmes looks deadly serious for once. I'm scared. Someone hold me, I'm scared. Ah! Mikotoba! Oh, no. No, not you. <laughs> the other Mikotoba. Oh boy, I'm scared too. <laughs> <laughs> that tragedy we had to go through in the SS for Yaw. It was all for nothing. Kazuma wasn't dead at all. Yeah, apologize to me, punk. We're completely taken in by that lie of yours. Your great detective's a lie. It really was great, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I took no pleasure in deceiving you. However, at the time, all that concerned me was preventing the young man's study tour from taking place, whatever the cost. Huh? Why? I capitalized on the events that transpired to see that he was sent back to Japan. I don't follow. He... his remains, you mean? Precisely, Mr. Sato. And then, I made sure that somebody else was sent to Britain in his stead. Oh my... you mean... The arrangement between our two countries was already in place. One university student lawyer, and one judicial assistant to be his... to be accommodated on the tour. In other words, by arranging for someone else to fill the place originally intended for Sogi, I would successfully prevent the man from arriving on our shores for several years at least. Wait, do you mean to say it was all for aiding, the aid of stopping Kazuma from coming to Britain? Why? Think back, Mr. Naruhodo. Was there not somebody who quite casually urged you to continue on the voyage to our England? Uh, let me think about it. The terms of this study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Britain and Japan. In the light of Mr. Sogi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid this study tour can no longer go ahead. Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, darn. Ah, uh, my dear fellows, the majority of problems have been extremely simple solution, you know? You two. You become a lawyer. Um... But is there no one else with necessary qualifications? We don't know another lawyer. Uh, I'm sure it can be arranged. The voyage to London still promises a good month of time. You can cram a bit, can't you? Ample opportunity, I'd say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. I'm not following, Chief. You manipulated me? You gaslighted me? I don't even know what a gaslight is. We only have lamps here. I've often remarked on the extraordinary lengths to which friendship will drive a man. I was quite sure. Now you would rise to the challenge for your late friend. Yeah, you're taking credit for a lot of studying hours, buddy. I don't believe it. Yeah, it's a bit far-fetched, honestly. It was all contrived. I mean, what happened was treated by authorities as murder. A woman that was mistakenly arrested as the perpetrator. Naturally, I didn't allow that misapprehension to have any serious repercussions. Whatever. I subsequently explained everything and assisted the unfortunate soul in finding the foreign refuge she's- Oh, hey, she had a good- she had a happy ending, awesome! 
I seem to remember Mrs. Sato and I have some rather strong words for her. Well, she was certainly not devoid of all guilt. She deserved every word of it, I'm sure. What if she made it to America then? Things crossed. Could it really be a happy ending for everyone? Well, except you, Goku. Ain't looking good for it. Like, I'm, like, that's actually a pretty big twist. I'm not gonna lie. Is it the big twist? I don't know. I'm afraid I simply can't comprehend it. Even with the ample flashbacks. Why would you go to such lengths, Mr. Sholmes? Why would you... Why were you so determined to stop Kazuma-sama from reaching Britain? Well... The truth is, 12 months ago... There was already a very tangible omen of the impending tragedy, you see. What? An omen that, at this very moment in time, is close at hand. An omen of all these tragic events that already existed is close at hand? Asogi's in danger. Is that what you're playing at? Is Kazuma gonna get killed? Oh my god, I'm so effing scared. That would be the worst way to end this game, bro. This is where the dump is Iris and... Oh, is it? they're not here. Okay. Bring him. What do I do now? Uh, record bound is indicated. Duplicate follows. Okay. So that's pretty simple. What of this? Uh, there's a little hole over there. I'm gonna analyze the... Pocket watch again. If that was... The... Th okay. Uh, maybe. Mm, maybe not. It doesn't look like the indentation is big enough. You know what I mean? Uh, alright, we haven't read this yet. Following departure in the port of Dunkirk, all crew members are required to assemble the main deck. 10 p.m. in order to review evacuation procedures. It's like 20 minutes. Okay. Didn't learn a lot from that. And the sword. I don't think we've looked at this yet. Karuma, the Great Blade. Such a thing of beauty. I'm gonna gaze at it for hours. Okay. Let's just cut right at the chip. Not, sorry to the one. I didn't mean it. The tip of the great sword broken. Such a shame. It's been so meticulously cared for over the years. I can almost bear. I can almost hear Karuma's sobs. Kazuma must have really taken a swing for that to happen. It's almost unbelievable. Like. Dude, swords be sharp. This is the commentary you subscribe for. Well, when in doubt, let's stop pressing. There was no room for doubt with your instructions in the telegram, Mr. Sholmes. You were very clear that it was Judge Goku's office that should be searched. You obviously knew. That's where the list of names would be found. How'd you know that? Hmm. By but we only learned of those four names just six months ago, and only because they appeared at part of a top-secret government communication that were leaked. That's true, yes. But at the time, you were unaware of the background. You see, those four names were wired to Japan. Around six months ago before that, approximately this time last year, in fact, when you were both still in Japan. Okay, what's the significance? It really would be... Hypocrisy on my part to reprove others for intercepting state secrets. Because after all, I'm perpetually eavesdropping on communications between British and government... Japanese governments. Perpetually doing what? How? Where? Why would you see you just lounge around here? Oh, never mind the details, but you should know. No secret is safe from Herlock Jones. <laughs> when he has a design of knowing it. Oh my, what a fabulous line. Almost as good as the pheasant one. Now, one month after that list of our four names was wired to the recipient, Jigoku in Japan, Dr. John H. Wilson was murdered. Right. As soon as I learned of the incident, a hypothesis rapidly took shape in my mind. As it turned out, I was heartily correct and partly mistaken. Nevertheless, it was the beginning of all the tragic events that were to follow. Mr. Sholmes, please, tell us. We need to know. Tell us about these four names and the tragedy which they're all somehow connected. I mean, we get it. It's not really a twist anymore. These are people to be assassinated. I guess! 
as I... But then how would you... Oh my god, Jigoku put that guy at the start of the game up to it. The newspaper guy. Maybe? Oh. As I said, when I learned of Dr. Wilson's murder in Japan, my mind immediately turned to those four names. Because you see, there was someone else on the list who I believe to be recently deceased. Uh, who? A Shin. As it was transcribed in Japanese script. Miss Aishin. Wait, is her name like Mission? Is that the pun? I don't know. Not the time. That was a familiar name to me. She was a professional killer, well known among London's unsavory classes. I see. But she had completely vanished from existence several months before Wilson's murder. Which made you think she was in Japan. Yeah. So I came to the logical conclusion she had herself been killed, and accordingly, I became fearful of the lives of the remaining two persons on that list. Asogi and Gregson. Oh no. Owing to our proximity, I decided to take measures to protect Gregson myself, but I determined it would be safest of young Asogi were to stay away from Britain. You knew this whole time. That's why you sent him. That's why you sent him away to prevent him from coming back. Exactly. So, you already knew who Kazuma-sama was, Mr. Sholmes? Yes. Sholmes and I have exchanged correspondence for years. I recounted many tales about Asogi to him in my letters, and the news of Dr. Wilson's death, of course. So, Dr. Wilson's dead, then? I didn't know. Oh, Iris, I'm so sorry! I knew he's not my daddy, but still, that's very sad. I'm sorry, Iris. We didn't know how to tell you! We knew the significance of the name, obviously, but... But... We just couldn't bring ourselves to tell you. No. It's alright. No, it's not. I don't know. But what you just told us, Mr. Sholmes, doesn't completely tie with the facts. There's one big hole in your hypothesis. A big hole? A hole big enough for a whole pheasant? <laughs> yes. You mean... Asa Shin, I presume. Of course. Exactly. She wasn't killed, was she? She was in Japan, posing as a visiting student under the name Jezal Brett. I'm glad you're keeping up, my dear fellow. I only came away of that fact two days ago. Wait, what? In the foyer of the Great Waterloo Hotel. Uh... And upon hearing that startling revelation, the hypothesis that I'd formed surrounding those four names was completely turned topsy- Wait, what? So it's not assassinations? Excuse me? Is it just a coincidence? What is happening? I've lost, I've lost the plot. What do you mean when you say her hypothesis was turned topsy? I believed all four names on this, the names of victims. However, I was mistaken. Very much so, Asa Shin was a killer. Then this telegram is a list of both victims and killers, is it? Indeed. And it seemed that Miss Shin was dispatched from Britain with the sole intention of dispatching Dr. Wilson. Her visiting student status being merely a front. Uh, then is it target assassin? Target assassin? It could be that. Oh, crud. But no, what? Uh, Gregson's not an assassin. I don't get it. Which would, of course, explain why no motive could be determined for our actions. So the real reason Dr. Wilson was killed by Asa Shin is because he was the target of an assassination. For armed with that knowledge, fresh consideration of this telegram puts the list in a very different perspective. What do you mean? Well, does it not strike you? There's another among the four who subsequently became a visiting student. Oh. But of course, a name you only know too well. You're kidding. Cosmo's an assassin? I get it. What? <laughs> one goes to Japan, one goes to Britain. No! 
What did he say in court earlier today? Yes. On the 31st of October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. The mission was what? The assassination of the Mark. My god. Young Mr. Sogi accepted that mission a year ago now. Surely not. I can... Conclusion, this document is a contract of sorts. An international agreement, one might say, detailing an assassin exchange. A what? How could Cosmo get involved in something like that? Excuse me? He would never. Is that the stipulation to study? I don't... Let's assume that we have two parties, each wishing to dispose of a distinct individual. Those two parties then make a contract to swap their respective assassination targets. That would then be an assassin exchange. Sounds like a, sounds like a, sounds like a garage sale for knives. I don't, so to begin with, the British assassin is dispatched as a visiting student in Japan where she kills her target. And then the Japanese assassin is dispatched as a visiting student to Britain in order to eliminate his target. And because of, oh, we don't want to get everyone, we don't want to get both countries involved, which as I researched, I want to say research, I just looked into it, you know. For this project, that is a genuine thing that actually happens. There's a guy from Japan, he, he kills some people in Sweden, and they're like, well, we don't want to make a big sink. God, they did their research. It certainly does sound like an exchange. But what on earth is the point? Don't forget, Naruto, that the British assassin at least escaped conviction. Thanks to the diplomatic immunity afforded consul their jurisdiction yeah so jurisdiction should be null and void under the terms of a new treaty between our two countries so the fact that it was brought into play suggests intervention the highest of levels highest of levels a free kill <sighs> but why Gregson who would go after Gregson I don't get it if he wasn't working for I don't know I thought he was working for the org what if he wasn't these murders were two sides of the same coin, linked not by common motive, but by contractual agreement. As such, they appeared utterly unrelated. Yet in truth, the assassins were complicit in one singular devilish scheme. That dissociation and the safeguard of diplomatic immunity, I believe the motivation beyond this plot. But wait a minute, Sholmes. If this telegram really is describing the exchange of assassins, as you're suggesting. It would mean that the Japanese killer target was never Sashiro Jogoku at all. It would mean Asogi's target was Inspector Gregson. Kazuma was here for Gregson. So Jogoku wasn't actually the mark. So he ran away like a little girl for nothing. I mean, I'm a little girl. All right, that's exactly what it would mean. Hmm. I hold myself personally responsible for failing to keep the inspector safe. Mr. Sholmes, I'm sure you did all you could. I told him of my fears and implored him to seek a transfer to an overseas position, so his thing in France. Obviously with a young pickpocket in tow. Then you're still thinking of Gina. Could I think of it, Inspector Gregson did mention something at the great exhibit. They'd be transferring to Paris soon. Or Gina. But without informing me, he engaged in one last assignment, it seems. Sadly, it turned out to be his very last. It's too much to take in. So was Gregson really innocent? Oh, God. All right, everyone. That's quite enough of all the serious talk for one day. Isn't it, Hurley? I mean, look at the time. Oh, quite right, Iris. We must conclude our preparations for tomorrow. Wait, what preparations? What do you guys have to do? I'm the lawyer. I think I shall make my way back to my hotel room now. So certainly a night to remember. Be safe, mister. Make it over. Do not die. It's dangerous out there, I'm just saying. It's a little bit sad, though. Mm. I mean, I like the idea of you being my dad. <laughs> because then Susie would be my big sister. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Iris. She can't be in spirit, I guess. I know, Iris. I was thinking quite the same. <laughs> Were you? 
<laughs> Mika Toe was just in the corner. Well, thank goodness they, they didn't think of how awful it would be. I never told it. <laughs> if somebody like me would be worthy, I would be delighted to become your sister. <gasps> what? Really? Oh, absolutely. Without question. So, they'll teach you all the ways you know how to throw Runo to the floor? Yes. It's surprisingly simple. <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. Hey! I... You didn't have to agree so quickly. Oh, but wait a minute. If Susan's going to be my big sister, you could be my big brother if you want Runo. That's very kind of you. I mean, uh, yes, of course. If you'll have me, I'll gladly be your brother. Well done, Iris. We must always be mindful of feelings. I have raised you ever so well. <laughs> He's laughing. I don't know why. We'll just let him have it. Because being sensitive is your strong suit, naturally. Uh, say as I do, don't do as I do. Regardless. Iris is smiling again. Always right in the world. I'm going to work extra hard for tomorrow. Because it's for my big bro and sis. <laughs> um, what is all this talk of preparing? For what? Hmm. <laughs> you just have to wait and see. Oh, alright then. Good luck in court tomorrow. I'm expecting a sterling performance. I'll try my best, of course. Not a bad scene. I'm still thinking about the pheasant line. So the overnight break in the trial's proceedings became a crucial turning point, exposing new truths while posing new conundrums. This list of four names on the telegram in Jigoku's office and the extraordinary assassination plot in which my best friend has somehow been involved. It's all come to light. I felt as though I'd been plunged into an even greater darkness all of a sudden. At the same time, I felt sure I'd see the light again soon. Darn right. We got, we got the squad backing us up. Because I was lucky enough to have the most wonderful family in the world. <laughs> God damn. And Herlock Jones. He's okay, too. Okay! Let me at him. Let me at him. Come on. Get me in there. Oh. Oh, really? For once. Come right at the chase. Before we begin today, I have a brief announcement. And with the closed trial ten years ago, some astonishing facts have come to light in these proceedings. The revelation that we... The well-known Reaper is actually an organization illegally executing its own brand of justice. And the discovery that a respected yard inspector was at its heart until he himself perished in an assassination plot. Well, I say to all members of the judiciary here present on this occasion that we will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Consuls, you will undertake this trial with the resolve, get it, to pursue the truth to the bitter end. Okay. That's that's what I'm here for. Hmm. My lord, if I may inquire. The defendant may speak. On what grounds is Cosmo Sogi permitted to continue his role as prosecutor? Wait, what? I don't I don't get it. He was admitted to colluding with the victim and a plot to assassinate an innocent man. He shouldn't be enjoying the privilege of freedom, let alone be leading the prosecution. I'm with him on this one. He did say that under oath. I submitted a written petition to Lord Strongheart, requesting that judgment of my transgressions be delayed by one day. Oh, one day? You did what? In today's proceedings, I intend to expose everything. My whole life, for the last ten years, has all been leading up to this one day. What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> there goes our happy ending. Whatever the outcome of this trial, I give my word that I will accept whatever punishment is deemed appropriate, however severe. And I suggest you prepare yourself for the same, Reaper. Oh, oh my goodness. Cosmos is bristling with hostility today. He's hell-bent on taking the Reaper to the gallows. Well... I get the distinct impression we're heading to very dangerous territory. Is that really even Cosmos Sama standing before us? An assassin exchange student! Oh no! 
as extreme exception to normal practices, I have granted this prosecutor's request. The defense finds this acceptable, I presume? Uh, well, I don't want to rock the boat. Let's go. Very well. In that case, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the closed hearing. A Baron Von Zeeks. Okay. I'm ready to go. The prosecution is ready more than ready. Very well, then. This preamble has taken long enough. Prosecutor Watsogi, begin! As you wish, my lord. The prosecution calls the first witness to the stand. Being Sashiro Jigoku in the courtroom. <sighs> All right, we reached the final battle. Jigoku, he's putting literally everything on the line now in order to get the truth. I gotta do the same for the acquittal, okay. Come on, Rinosuke. It's time for that steely resolve. Cause this is going to test it to the limit. Oh my God, so cool. <laughs> You've been a bad man, sir. Witness, state your name and occupation for the court. You know, I really expect Strongheart and Jigoku to be in the same room when I conceived these two characters. Not that I wrote the characters, but you know. So. It was you who issued this, was it? Your subpoena? I did what was necessary. <laughs> well, look what the young man has become. I didn't think I'd see the day when you take that tone with me, I must say. The witness will ensure his responses are pertinent to the questions asked. Oh, goodness. Okay. Back to business. My name is Sishiro Jigoku. A Supreme Court judge from the Empire of Japan. Sixteen years ago, this man came to London as a visiting student. Six years later, he returned to Japan, as well as presiding over the Supreme Court. He is also currently Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. I am, of course, fully aware of Mr. Jigoku and his preeminent roles. I invited him personally to the International Forensic Science Symposium as a representative of his country. I uh, hear he also has a key role in the conclusion of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. Ha <laughs> was a great honor to be involved in the negotiations. I have put my all into that treaty. Judge Goku changed his accent on the fly. That two-faced freak! <clears throat> I mean, I have to ask, Jigoku. Well, I never. Fancy the young murdering student turning up here of all places. Hey! You're... You're acquitting me. You know this. Don't need my rep. Taking another hit, dude. I'm practicing a def I'm a de practicing defense lawyer, have you know? Yes. And full of self-importance like your friend across the courtroom, I see. Yeah, whatever. You came here to London by invitation to the International Science Symposium. But then, without informing anyone of your plans, you headed back to France. I took flight, you say? I have to object to that turn of phrase. Tch, however you want to say it. Explain yourself. What exactly were the circumstances? Oh, uh, well... I was somewhat expecting this. Sorry to say. What? I declined to comment. You can do that? Leaving the country prematurely when I was invited guests may be questionable etiquette. But my decision is unrelated to this case. You can't be bound to testify. You can't be bound to testify. You little... Mm, you little shrimp! Unrelated, you say? <sighs> I appreciate that a requested police inspector has been killed. For which I offer my condolences. However, being an alien, I'd obviously never met the man. Nor do I know the first thing about him. Is that true? Is that true? How can that be Surely you met at some point. If you're so close with Mikotoba and Sholmes. Really? As such, I'm in no position to testify. It's as simple as that. So you'd run from all of this? I beg your pardon? His case is far more reaching than the murder of Inspector Gregson. It has ties to another murder, a case that was tried in Japan almost a year ago now. Surely you haven't forgotten. 
a year ago in Japan. The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right! And you, Judge Yigoku, are the heart of both cases! The defense has evidence to prove this. Hmm. Well, Ryanosuke, I see from the look in your eyes that you're resolved to carry this through to the very end. Well, naturally. For Wilson, bro, I hardly knew the guy. Well, I didn't really know him at all. But come on! Someone's got to look out for him! Let's see some evidence, then. What proof do you have that Sashiro... <sighs> come on, buddy. You gotta be kidding me. That's the easy- I was, I was actually scared. I was like, wait, wait, what? It, 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 yeah, that's right, okay. This is a telegram detailed the communication sent between Britain and Japan approximately one year ago. The communication contained four names. I punched my keyboard, ow. Doctor? As <laughs> no, he's not a doctor. <laughs> Asogi, Shin, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Oh, you don't look too happy, Poppy. You, you little. Whoa! Where did you get that? In Tokyo? From your office? What? How on earth did you? What's this all about? Why is my name on that list? This list of four names follows a certain pattern. Gregson and Wilson are the names of victims. Asogi and Shin are the names of assassins. No! Dog, tell me I'm wrong. Please tell me I'm wrong, Asogi. A year ago in Tokyo, Dr. John H. Wilson's life was taken in a Western-style restaurant with, with fan, fantastic plates, I must add. They were very cute. The culprit was found to be a visiting student who was sent, who went by the name Jezza Brett, but her real name was Asa Shin, a professional killer sent on a mission to kill for Great Britain. A. Shin and her victim, J. Wilson. The murder that just took place here in London was the counterpart to that crime. An assassin sent from Japan, also a visiting student. Kazuma Sogi. You said it so yourself, didn't you? Whose victim was the British police officer, Inspector Gregson? But Kazuma says he didn't do it. So then who did? Kazuma, Asogi, and Tobias Gregson. One assassin from each country to kill a target residing in the other. What exactly is the defense suggesting? These two cases of murder, one that took place in Britain and the other one in Japan, were masterminded by a pair of individuals from each country as a form of assassin exchange. And the telegram the defense has acquired is proof of this international contract to kill! What? I mean, it, uh, uh, low key, it sounds a little far fetched. I'm not gonna lie. Like, now that I say it out loud, the telegram was found in your office, Judge Goku. In other words, the mastermind in Japan was you! Mm, in fairness, they're just four names on a piece of paper. <laughs> Ju Judge Goku, what is this all about? My plea the fifth. <laughs> and you, Kazuma, you lied! During yesterday's proceedings, you acknowledged that you'd accept the assassination mission, but the mark wasn't Judge Goku at all. It was Gregson, Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard, and shown by the name of the killing contract. Very impressive, Ryanosuke. But actually, I didn't lie. Oh. The name of the target I was ordered to kill never passed my lips yesterday. The idea that Sashiro Jigoku was the mark came entirely from you. Did it? Huh? You deliberately avoided saying his name. Oh dang, he's. Also, how does the unicorn thing not get stuck in the in the like the gavel? You know what I mean? No, the gavel's the hammer. And what is that thing? I don't. The defense claims these four names indicate some sort of international assassin exchange. I'm sure I speak for all present when I say the very idea seems utterly absurd. Well, Mr. Jigoku, what do you say for yourself? Uh, his silence is, uh, deafening. And it's only going to prove his guilt. There's another very important point that this new development brings to light. There's now a distinct possibility 
that the scene of the Inspector Gregson's actual murder was in the witness's cabin aboard the SS Gru. Mmm. Judge Goku, you have to testify now. To refuse would have put you in contempt of court. We got you, whether you like it or not. You and your stupid beard. <laughs> There's no need for quite such a vicious stare, young man. Um, are you sure? Very well, then, as a parting gift to you all, I'll tell you everything I know. Really? Just that easy? It seems this Japanese gentleman has information that the court must hear. By the alleged assassin exchange and the events of the night of the 31st of October. Present your testimony now! Okay, as you wish. <laughs> wow, they're very... <laughs> the juxtaposition here. Okay. Uh... We know he's gonna try and lie. It sucks to say, I liked the guy, and he's a sharp dresser, you gotta admit. But we have to get Vin- like, he's an innocent man. Right? It's true that Kazuma Sogi was assigned the assassination mission one year ago. The target was Inspector Gregson. That was a condition of the British study tour. However, in the end, something happened that meant the young man wasn't able to carry out his mission. Oh. On the evening in question, a member of the crew was on duty outside my cabin at all times. If there had been a shot fired, the crewman would have heard it. <laughs> so it clearly can't be involved. Are you joking? You'd really try and lie like that. That was the easiest layup of my career. Bro, this is the final trial. That's all you got for me? That's all you got for me, you sicko little freak? You sicko little idiot? No, nuh uh. You dumbo. You look like. Man, your ears are huge. I can't even see them. I don't. I'm mad. I'm actually mad. I feel betrayed. This guy set us up on our journey, and now, you're trying to pull one of these? So he admitted. It's true. This communication suggests there really was an assassin exchange. A political endeavor at the highest levels. Not something I can discuss here. It is a court. It's a it's close court. I mean, you really could. To use such a worthy practice as a foreign study to coerce somebody to commit murder. It's the most appalling thing I've ever heard. I'm with Sasato on this one. I'm like... <laughs> I could bring a man to tears. Appalling? Well, it's easy to judge. Pardon? Uh, so he had a reason for taking his sword to that British inspector, you know. Whatever! Which is why he accepted the mission in the first place. Isn't that right, Council? You don't have to say nothing. You're not. You're not on the. You're not on the stand, Cosmo. Unless you did it, then you gotta be on the stand. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm terrified. How? How far we walk away from the golden road? <laughs> Judge Goku, if you are the mastermind behind this operation in Japan, then tell the court the identity of the counterpart in Britain now. I'm not obliged to divulge that information. But you know. <laughs> As I said yesterday, I've killed no one. I freely admit that I accepted the mission, but on the night the plan was to be executed, I backed out. In short, this assassin exchange the defense has identified is unrelated to the events in this case. I mean, that's motive, but if Kazuma's really telling the truth and he didn't do it, then no wonder he suspects Van Zeeks. But it could have been anybody, right? Who was on that boat? The crucial point in this your police inspector can't have perished aboard that ship in Gun Dunkirk. Cause he'd been shot in the cabin, it's inconceivable that a member of the crew wouldn't have heard it. That's right. Cosmo, no! Gregson was killed after returning to London, in the room on Fresno Street. And the perpetrator of the crime was the Reaper. Baron von Zeeks! The prosecution's accusations remain unchanged. You're full of it. Get I'm actually too- I'm, I'm getting mad. <laughs> this is like gaslighting. We know though, we know because we saw it with Mikotoba's testimony. Ah! To think that a seemingly innocent foreign exchange program was a facade for such a Machiavellian dealing. Clearly it's a plot only a government minister and a high-ranking judge such as the witness could hope 
to execute. Well, I seem to recall that it was someone on the British side who controlled everything. Oh, whoever could you mean, Jagoku? Be that as it may, it is not the place of this court to pursue this villainous assassin exchange. I assure you I had nothing to do with. We are concerned only with the tangible evidence pertaining to the murder of Gregson. Is the defense clear on that point? Well, wasn't that fishy? Well, he's not wrong. That's the law. I'll keep that in mind during the cross-examination, sir. Which I will do <gasps> right now. Wait, we weren't ordered to do that. Interesting. All right, I wasn't born yesterday. You all clearly see the discrepancy here, right? Number of crew was on duty. They had drills to do. The drill will take 20 minutes. That's a 20 minute amount of time. And if you had this, which was in your waste basket, that was the perfect time to call Gregs into your cabin and have him killed. Get over yourself, Jigoku. I've been at this for one, two, three, four, five. I've only played five Ace Attorneys. I feel like I've done like a million. Huh. Anyway, as the court has heard, there was a crewman posted outside Judge Jigoku's cabin. However, we can be sure that contrary to the witness's claims, the guard wasn't there at all times. What? I've heard here, I have here a notice of a particular event that was scheduled on the 31st. Oh, where did you get that? Well, it's uh, evidence gathered by the great Herlock Sholmes. Maybe you've met him. You were acquainted yesterday, if you remember. <laughs> Said that so weird. Herlock Sholmes again? Yeah, he's like that. According to this itinerary, after leaving the port of Dunkirk at exactly 10 p.m., for a period of 20 minutes, all crewmen on the SS crew were to gather on deck for an evacuation drill. All crewmen were away from their posts at an exact time, no less, during that 20 minute interval. Any gunshots emanating from the cabin would have been heard by no one. Oh my god, that face. In summary, Judge Shigoku, you have ample opportunity to commit the crime! Ugh. Can't, he's not even pointing at Oh, how are you going to get out of this? A 20-minute window of opportunity. That's an excellent find, Ryunosuke. But it amounts to nothing. No, it amounts to 20 minutes of free time. What, what are you talking about? Because the witness clearly stated in his testimony that no incident occurred in his cabin. Unless you have some decisive evidence that can show his testimony to be false. Your accusation is nothing more than conjecture. Okay. I mean, we don't have the bullet hole. It's not like we cut out the wall of the ship. <sighs> if only Shom took a picture. Dang it! Inspector Gregson was killed in Judge Goku's cabin that night. I'm certain of it! Because the defense has evidence to prove it. <laughs> no, I don't! <laughs> Wait, do I? Let me think about it. Uh... Uh, that's not looking good. You will present the evidence of the defense at what? <gasps> I do! I do have evidence! If this truly is a part of Gregson's watch, that proves he was here on the 31st! You see little things all over the place, don't you? The part of the top of the pocket watch that you twist to set the time. I recall it's the crown, I believe, of a watch. The crown that sits on top of Monarch's head. Very grand name for a tiny part. But actually, yes, if this is a crown, I have a feeling I might have seen a monarch around here somewhere with a very bare head. Is now the moment for jokes, Narodo? If by monarch you mean pocket watch, then I'm quite sure you have. Okay, that spells it out. If we can fuse these two together, which I hope to gosh we can, we're golden. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Sato? I feel sure I know exactly what will fit here. Really? I was thinking precisely the same thing. We're about to see that little round counterpart is actually part of Inspector Gregson's broken watch. Really? I was uh, just thinking that too, actually. There it is. Okay, but why two parts of it? I don't know, I don't know how old timey watches work. A perfect fit. I knew it! All right, perhaps you knew it, Sasato. 
I'll make a note of this at once. Perfect. We got it. Let's go. Now, I want to be very clear what it reads as small machine part from Mr. Sholmes found in Jagoku's cabin. It's now clear that it's the missing part of Inspector Gregson's pocket watch. How do you explain this? He was absolutely there. Judge Jigoku, this was found in your cabin yesterday. We get why we the emphasis on your? The crown of a pocket watch? A, a pocket watch? And if you will observe, the victim's pocket watch, which we know he treasured, is missing precisely that part. Dang, just like the sword. You gotta clean up all the scrap metal in your- <laughs> This is why you got to stay tidy, everybody. Clean up your house. Cause I have an empty LaCroix right over here. I should... Okay, we took care of it. It can be! Moreover, this crown is a perfect fit on the spindle protruding from the victim's watch. Now, the fact that this was retrieved from Judge Goku's cabin. Tell us what the victim's watch almost certainly broke there. Then that's it. Fresno Street never happened. In other words, the victim was killed on the 30, 31st. 20 minute evacuation drill. In the cabin, you occupied Judge Goku. You did it, didn't you? Well, you're razor sharp, aren't you, young, m you young murderer? Hey, hey. Objection. I'm supposed to be throwing out the accusations. No, actually, I'm supposed to be defending. Uh, Expertly maneuvered, Ryunosuke. <laughs> well, I had so many clues. And your argument sounds entirely plausible. At first. Excuse me? There ain't no way. But rather like this pocket watch, it's full of cracks. I mean, that's your job. All right, point them out to me. I believe Judge Goku feels the same way. Oh, he's, uh... <laughs> looks like he's found his resolve! I was wrong to acquit you earlier in the year. What? No, you were not! If I'd known that it would result in anyone having to listen to this drivel... Okay, it's figure of speech. Oh, look at that. I would have clearly declared you guilty just to spare the world of your ridiculous bombast. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even care anymore. You're dead to me. I think it's clear that the witness will have to give further testimony. When you hear what actually happened in my cabin that night, you'll notice the pitfall in which you stumbled. All right, here we go. The next part. The fact this part of the victim's watch was discovered in your cabin means that you acknowledge he was there, I presume? Yes, I do. Very well, then. You may proceed to give your testimony about what actually happened in the cabin on the 31st. Of course. As a man of the law, I have no intention of obstructing justice. At all, even to save my own skin. I mean, I would never, ever, ever. All right. I had a guest waiting for me when I returned to my cabin after finishing- Ooh. Wait, what? Someone went- What do you say? When I walked through the door, a mustached Englishman was there, foolishly waving a gun at me. I soon took care of him with an eponcio throw. He couldn't wait to run after that. I imagine his watch was broken when I threw him. It has nothing to do with this murder. The inspector was clearly killed having returned to Britain, because his body was found in London. Uh... So you're saying it was an un... An un... Uh, unrelated assailant? Epon Seal? A common jujitsu martial arts technique in my country. I was careful not to use too much force, but the man obviously landed too heavily for his watch to take. <laughs> So, Ryunosuke Naruto, I imagine you see the flaw in your logic, can't you? It's an unrelated watch part that absolutely match. No, they're saying it could have been Gregson. But that's where his watch broke. Then he came back and got killed. Dog, what? The fact that the pocket watch was broken in the witness's cabin in no way proves the victim was murdered there. Um, God, that's the most erm actually thing ever. I have no doubt the inspector intended to kill me, but he didn't manage to pull the trigger. Yes, 
because he was merely that tactician, not the Reaper's hand of death. Well, the testimony appears to make perfect sense as far as I can tell. Let me express my deep gratitude for your understanding, my lord. But if his testimony holds, Judge Goku will be deemed to have no involvement in the case, and he clearly does. Well, Counsel, I see no more reason for wasting precious court time here on a cross-examination. Oh no, I'll, I'll keep wasting time, bro. I'll waste time all day. Sorry, my lord, the defense has a right to cross-examine, and I won't squander it. You're an embarrassment to your countrymen, not knowing when you're beaten. I can say the same for you. <laughs> my god, what was that? In that case, proceed, Narahodo! Okay. What can we get him on? I got no idea. I guess let's just start pressing. I guess waiting for me to return to my cabin after finishing my evening meal. Okay. When I walked through the door, a mustached Englishman was there foolishly waving a gun at me. I soon took care of him with an epon throw, though. He couldn't wait to run after that. His watch broke. I have nothing to do with his murder. Okay, let's talk about this. The crown snapped off, and the glass covering the face of the watch was cracked. Preferable to the man's head being pulled off or spine cracking, wouldn't you say? No, that man was spared for long. A bullet to the chest soon saw to that. Now the point is, the broken pocket watch doesn't prove that a murder took place. Absolutely not. All the watch proves is the power of my throw. <laughs> Whatever you say, it doesn't quite ring true that no shot was fired in that cabin. We know that, because there was obviously a bullet hole in that wall. <laughs> you didn't mention that in your testimony. What are you talking about? Um. That's what the star of your lowbrow detective story has told you, is it? Well, I don't care for such fiction. <sighs> He's not here. He can't testify. Dang it! Haven't you worked it out yet? You little stripling. No murder took place in my cabin. Dang it. Okay. The inspector's colleague killed having returned to Britain because his body was found in London. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about that. There's no evidence to prove the victim ever returned to London alive. Just take a moment to think the idea through now, Stripling. What? The inspector was killed on the steamship in France. How on earth could he have got back to Britain? They transported the body, duh! When people die, their bodies remain at the same spot. It's a devil of a thing. What did you say? Obviously the culprit must have moved the body! How? Carrying a corpse off a ship in your arms would raise a few eyebrows at least, don't you think? Well, yeah, that's true. All passenger luggage is inspected when unloaded on arrival. I would like to think the border police would query the corpse of an Englishman. Okay. Yeah. How'd they get the body off the ship? The murder had taken place aboard the ship. You imagine the body would have been disposed off the sea. And yet, Fresno Street, Norodo, Fresno! There would be no sense in risking being caught by the attempting to transport the body back to Britain. Unless you want to implicate Van Zeeks. Uh. But perhaps not. Wait, what, Sosato? We've heard that the first-class passengers were under constant scrutiny by the crewman post of the guard, which would mean that the culprit had no opportunity to dispose of the body. Yeah. Is there any other way to sneak a body off of the ship? So transporting the body to Britain may have been the only viable alternative. No, 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 dear me. You really are new to this, aren't you? Yeah, by a year. How many cases have I won? Like... Five? That's a lot. I thought it'd be perfectly clear, but it seems I'm going to have to explain it in words you can understand. I think I ought to alter my testimony with your consent. Whoa, okay, okay, go. yeah, do that. I have no objection. State your amended testimony. Okay. There's no possible way I could have transported the victim's corpse back to Britain. Really? Why do you say that? There's an idea. Think about it, Stripling. All passengers and crew disembarked at the same time and passed through the same check at the border. The symposium guests were driven straight to the ho- 
The symposium guests were driven straight to the hotel in carriages organized by the ministry. You're saying it yourself. You had special treatment. And we met you as soon as you arrived at the hotel. So you did. Well then, remind me. Did I have a corpse over my shoulder at the time? Let me look. Let me look. Let me think about it. Where the crud is it? Um. Uh, there's no, like, water or anything. He did have this big old trunk, though. And we've already established you can fit a body in there. But the only issue is... Yeah, checking his bags. Dude. They would have done that, right? Do we have a way of proving otherwise? Well, no, you didn't have a body, I guess. So, we're in agreement then. I couldn't possibly have brought the inspector's body back to Britain. <laughs> Unless, of course, they developed some clever device these days to instantly move things from A to B. Yeah, if only that invention existed. Funny you should say that. Perhaps your harebrained invention didn't actually work, though, Mr. Narahodo. Right, of course. The defense has become unusually quiet. Yes, because there's really nothing more to say. Um, so that's the story. Well, I suppose if you think about it, whenever you drop a teacup in the office and it breaks, we don't say Mr. Naruto must have been murdered here, do we? Is that a veiled threat about me being clumsy? <laughs> what happened if I break another one? Fact is, Inspector Gregson's body was found in the little room on Fresno Street. If he really was killed and should judge Jigoku's cabin, the body would have to be moved somehow. Transporting a dead body. I think it's the case, bro. Straight up. There must have been some special circumstance that made it possible for the culprit. What did he say exactly? Passages and crew disembarked at the same time at the border. The symposium guests were driven straight to the hotel in carriages organized by the ministry. <sighs> Is that enough? Did I have a corpse at my shoulder at the time? He's practically saying, he's practically taunting me to pick that. Your transportation was taken care of by the ministry, and we already... Listen, I don't know if it's been established, but this feels like an inside job. I think it was possible. You had it with you. Objection. Even at the hotel. Okay, thank God. I was like 50-50. <laughs> There's no possible way you could have moved Inspector Gregson's body, you say. I'd say the opposite is true. And what's that supposed to mean? Far from being impossible for you to do. The transporting of Inspector Gregson's body back to Britain is something only you could do! What are you talking about, Ryanosuke? As well as being a judge, Jigoku's also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Which means he's exempt from having his luggage searched when he enters the... Was that established? I forgot. Like, was that said in the Waterloo Hotel? We learned that when we met you. Oh, yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> My guard was down. I was happy to see characters and for Susato to see her dad. I was not focusing on that. Well, all those passport checks and luggage search at the border took rather a lot of time. I must say, I'm very envious of your ministerial status. Oh, my God. All right, I'm going to break character here. That was, that was a while ago. I, <laughs> Not just in the context of the chapter, but... Okay, uh, I presume you recall this, Judge Goku. We have photographic evidence of you and your bag on the day in question. The court will now note, you have a rather large traveling trunk. Large enough, in fact, to hide a corpse. Narahodo, you're not suggesting. I'm afraid I am. Three days ago, when we were chatting innocently with the new arrival from Japan. The body of the inspector was just meters away from us inside Jigoku's trunk. It's almost, it's almost too much. Oh my goodness. Order in my court. I'm skeptical, counsel, that a grown man's body could fit inside the largest travel trunk. Oh, it could. Because I happen to know that the witness himself a man of considerable size, somehow fit in. And verifying that would be extremely simple, wouldn't it, Judge Jigoku? Uh, but inside his trunk, how horrifying. 
after he'd spoken with you at the Great Waterloo Hotel. You have the opportunity to visit the apparent scene on Fresno Street, taking your trunk with you in a cab to deposit the inspector's body. That's so wrong. <laughs> My god, Jigoku. I don't have to listen to this nonsense. Dr. Gore, the coroner who examined the body, has confirmed the possibility. She acknowledged there is a sign that steps have been taken to disguise the true time of death. The onset of the body's decomposition could be delayed by storing in a refrigerator. Oh, here he goes again. No, no, Cancel, as I have explained to you several times, refrigerators of that size are very hard to come by. Oh, I'm sure. They are a rarity. But one place certainly found on one large ocean liner. Such ships are equipped with electronic refrigerator cold rooms to keep food fresh for the long voyages, and the SS Grew is no exception. Professor Mikotoba told me about it yesterday. Well, Judge Jigoku, you can't deny the possibilities. However much you prolong this debate, you can't eliminate the truth. All the evidence points to you being the killer! I always thought the gloves were an odd look. <laughs> well, this is all very heartening. What? I can see that it was a wise move letting a Sogi and you embark on this study. What are you talking about now? Logical reasoning, of course. All court proceedings were built on logical reasoning in the new century. And I can see... Now, you're both laid firm foundations for that already. Chechigoku, please, stop diverting attention from the issue at hand. The fence has made accusations against you. How do you respond? Respond? There's really no need for me to respond, is there? Why ever not? Because before you can even begin to answer the questions that the victim was killed, you must first establish one key fact. Where was the victim killed? It's quite logical. Uh, the actual scene of the crime? I don't know, probably your room. The prosecutor's stance is unaltered. The killing took place on Fresno Street, when the gunshot was heard. As the accused Baron Von Zeke shot the victim at point-blank range. Since no tangible evidence exists to prove the prosecution's claim, the defense deductions amount to little more than an elaborate fairy tale. This is so unfair. I'm afraid that's how logical reasoning the British Empire know for really works, young stripling. Okay. The victim was shot in that little room on Fresno Street and died instantly. I'm afraid it's the prosecution's claim. That's the only fairy tale here. How can you say? Quite simply. Because that claim directly contradicts a certain piece of evidence in our possession. The autopsy? The autopsy report. Think you better explain to the court. Do it. The prosecutor claims Gregson died instantly when he was shot at the scene of the crime on Fresno Street, which was not the scene of the crime, by the way, but... Where is it? Interde okay, interdeterminate evidence suggests measures have been taken to disguise the time of death. He was shot in the chest at close range from the front, resulting in instant death. Scorch marks. Okay. Wait. Maybe it's not this. Dog, what are we even what are we even trying to disprove? The victim was shot in the little room on Fresno Street and died instantly. Instantly. And Oh my god. That's a that was a brain blast moment. Look at how he's positioned. It's it's just like he's if you get shot, you fall on your back, bro. If he was shot in the chest... Where's the autopsy? There it is. I freaking just... The victim was shot in the chest at close range. Why would you curl up into a ball if you're not being transported? <laughs> this game, bro, makes you feel like a genius. A photograph of the victim. In the very location you claimed he wasn't killed? That's your proof? My point is the posture. <laughs> you see it too, Kazuma. If Inspector Gregson has been shot here in that room, 
It's out of the question his body would have been curled up in a ball! Yeah, he's objecting. I'm sorry to disappoint- Oh, I got it wrong. But your logic is flawed. Could have easily adopted that fetal, p fetal position due to the pain of shot which subsequently proved fatal. Objection. No, the autopsy report says otherwise. Sorry to disappoint you. But it's your logic that's flawed. We've been saying that for like 30 minutes. According to the autopsy report, the victim died instantly. He would have felt no pain. Much less been able to draw himself into that position. Oh, you didn't know? Which begs the question. Why the victim's body is curled up in that way. Though the answer should be abundantly clear by now. You're suggesting? Yeah. The inspector's body took on that posture ahead of its arrival at Fresno Street. For it was coldly turned out on the floor from the inside of a traveling trunk. You're... you're right. The shape of the body. It looks exactly like it been in confined space. I, I can't believe it took me that long to figure that out. Oh my god. Goku, present your trunk for examination. I believe it's very possible. It will contain traces of the victim's blood. Uh, uh. <sighs> Whoa! Present my trunk? I refuse! What? On what grounds? I'm the Minister of Foreign Affairs from the Empire of Japan! I shouldn't have to put up with this treatment just because of some striplings, baseless accusations! In other words, Judge Goku, there is blood in your trunk, and probably blood in your stool. Ah! I decline to answer that. Wait, what was that second comment? As the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I... I don't care who you are. You're in the court of law! At this moment, you're not a government minister. You're a witness in the sand in Charles' highest court. Get him! I don't care who you are or your status outside this courtroom, but you will not withhold information. Nothing is more important than the truth. Ooh, kill him! Ooh, kill him! That's our boy! That's our boy! Mm -hmm. Order in the court. Well, Mr. Jogoku, what will it be? Your stool sample now! You can't be serious. You... You did it? <sighs> Have you no shame at all, Kazuma Sogi? What? Uh, very well, I admit it. I did bring the inspector's body into the country. What? That wasn't so hard, was it? Inside my trunk, exactly as postulated by the defense. Oh, wow! What do you know? Dear God! How outrageous! I knew nothing of this at all! It was you! You admit- Oh! No! I admit to nothing more than what I've said! So you're not the killer? I certainly had no recollection of killing the man. What on earth is that cryptic statement supposed to mean? I merely disposed of the body which was left in my cabin in order to avoid unwanted attention. As the digital assistant over there pointed out, I have no chance to throw it in the ocean. So, I decided my only option was to bring it to Britain, with me and dispose of it somewhere else. You can't deny it. If you didn't do it, then who on earth killed the man? As you know, there was one other person in my cabin that night who had the opportunity. And moreover, he'd already accepted a mission to take the inspectors alive. Kazuma. That's right. Who else could it have been? It was you, Kazuma Sogi! Uh, no. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even feign like an argument. Like what the hell? I never thought you'd stoop this low, Sishiroji Koku. You've taken the words straight out of my mouth, Prosecutor Kazuma. You thought by leaving the body in my cabin, you could pin the crime on me, did you? Well, the prosecution counsel's already admitted to visiting the witness's cabin on the night in question. Yes, on an assassination mission, no less. But how would you know Gregson be in there? I don't understand. You wouldn't. Oh, what do you make of that, young stripling? You've had my testimony, and that's all I have to say on the matter. I admit to nothing more. You said that two statements ago, just for the record. I don't believe this. A judge? I think, I, I don't know. I haven't played all the Ace Attorneys. I think it's pretty unique. Uh, 
Counsel for the defense, what is your position now? The court awaits your response. The assertion that on the night in question the victim's assailant was in fact Mr. Kazuma Sogi. This isn't the dead end, it seems to be. The answer's right in front of me. It comes down to Goku or Kazuma. Both of them have the opportunity, but only one of them did it. I think I'm just a step away. The defense is ready to respond to the assertion. I don't know, dude. I still... Th the idea that the victim's murder could have been committed by Prosecutor Sogi is... I'm sorry, dog. I'm so I'm sticking up for my friend no matter what. He couldn't have done it. He promised! Let me remind you of something you said only a few minutes ago. You claim that logical reasoning is the future of judicial process. It is. No question about it. Well, logical reasoning can prove something here. Namely, that it would have been impossible for Prosecutor Sogi to commit the crime. I'll be honest, I was just operating on... Like, genuine feeling? I don't... I didn't think it through. What? <laughs> Cosmo's was like, huh? Oh, okay. Let, let him cook. The court will accept an argument that's supported by compelling evidence. So present what you will, counsel. What proof is there the alleged demonstration is impossible for a Sogi to been there. Um. Impossibility of Professor Sogi's involvement. Well, that's not gonna help. The sword. Uh, I mean. But when I look at all the other information, it. It does just seem like the sword is the only thing. I mean, even if you didn't have the tip of the sword, you could still commit a murder. Oh, I mean, before I got any... I, I don't know, dude. Wait, where was Kazuma? Maybe it's the time. Following departure of Dunkirk, all members... What time would he have been there? We've established he, he could have been on this ship, right? Otherwise, why would you go even say it? The drill will take 20 minutes. At 10. I don't think that matters. I'm going to try this. And if it's not that, then... You're making the evidence weep here, Ryanosuke. Sorry? Every piece of evidence has a role to play in arriving at the truth. They're not playthings you can toss around the courtroom for entertainment. I... Okay. Never mind the evidence. You're about to make me weep, Mr. Narar. I'm actually upset. These are getting just straight up rude. I admit, it's... <laughs> it's not easy to be like... That's wrong. Try again. You can only write that so many ways, but god dang. I can't upset Sasato. Or I'll end up being upset too. Goodness me. We know a member of the crew was on sentry duty outside the first class cabin nearly all the time. So as long as the guard was there, it would have been possible to fire a shot without being heard. And that much mayor is down when the crime could have been committed. Yeah, at 10. I don't remember Asogi's... Wait, he mentioned the hotel! Right? If only we had that record. Go away, accept an argument. Okay. But if they're mentioning... If they're mentioning... <laughs> I guess it has to be the the drill. No, wait, did we ever read this? Yes, of course. But no, like the other thing. Night before the ship arrived in Dover. Okay. Oh, they pretty much spelled it out for me. It's... Oh, frick. My bad. Take that. Is that it? This itinerary for crew members of the SS Grew. My lord, this is conclusive proof! An itinerary? How does that provoke anything? Judge Goku, the moment you acknowledge that you found the victim's body in your cabin, this itinerary suddenly became much more significant. What? Why? On the night in question, as always, a crewman sentry was on guard outside your cabin. As long as he was there, nobody could have fired a shot inside the cabin. We've discussed this. Because it's inconceivable the guard wouldn't have heard it and came to investigate. So then tell us that the crime must have taken place when the guard was elsewhere. And that narrows it down to 20 minutes just after 10 o'clock. I see no flaw in your reasoning, as we discussed. But the crucial point is this. When the evacuation drill took place, the steamship had already been put to sea. Oh, dumb. And if... If what Cosmo's saying about the hotel is true, because he didn't go through with it, it could only be people that were on the ship. 
He has alibi. Is that enough? Clearly the murder could have only been committed by someone who was aboard the vessel at the time. Which, might I remind you, includes you. Alright, and he was just saying, you know, I didn't come to Brendan taking in his life, I left Gregson, disembarked the ship. I spent the night, you know, presumably around 10 p.m., at a boarding house in town. Returned to Lung England the following morning. Which is, I'm sure the court will agree, is conclusive proof. That Cosmo Sogi couldn't possibly have carried out the killings. Ugh! Ugh! My stool! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Whoa, buddy! No! Absolutely not! I don't accept it! What do you mean? The boy's just saying that to exonerate himself! We can't trust that he really disembarked the vessel! Obviously, after he left my cabin, he hid himself somewhere on the ship! Just waiting, waiting for his chance to come back and finish the- Well, that's out of the question. Isn't it, Kazuma? As the defense recalls, I disembarked the vessel and spent the night in a boarding house in Dunkirk. As I said yesterday, I signed my name in the accommodations register book. All extremely easy to verify. <sighs> oh, I, I didn't know I was elsewhere! There's no escape this time! You can't forget, you're a judge of the government minister! It's time you gave the court an honest answer, as a common man! <laughs> oh my god, chill. You killed Inspector Tobias Gregson and transported his corpse to Britain. Then you dumped the body in the room on Fresno Street and made it look as if the murder had happened there! That's what really happened. Isn't it, Seshiro Jikoku?! It was that trial ten years ago. Uh, that's when all this began! Oh my god. Looking back now, my fate was decided that day. It was doomed already! Oh my god. Whoa! What is happening? That last bit was crazy, bro. It's over! My life is over! Holy crap. 